Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 66. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at <laughs> IntoTheCryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, as of January 1st, 2026, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is coming in at around 2.971 trillion, with the fair value longer in the regression trend line quite a bit higher at around 4.6 trillion. This still represents an undervaluation of approximately 35%. But this entire cycle, as we've said, is mostly driven by Bitcoin. So the overvaluation phases that we typically have gotten that normally occur in post-having years did not happen in this post-having year. And you could argue it was because of monetary policy. You could be, you know, was it quantitative tightening? Was it high interest rates? Was it because people were just tired of getting scammed out of all these different meme coins? Who knows? But we didn't get that rally above the fair value logger the congression trend line that was sustained. If you look at, say, the 2012 rally, after Bitcoin broke through the fair value logger, logger the congression trend line and went into this first peak, we actually saw a lot of altcoins back then in 2013 start to do really well. Not that there were many of them, but many of them did well in that time. And in the next cycle, it was mostly Bitcoin driven through 2015 and 2016. And then once we got into 2017, that's when many of you will probably remember the altcoin season of 2017, where we had the ICO craze. And so what started off as a Bitcoin-led bull market, Bitcoin then handed it off to the altcoins, where the altcoins made us go more into overvaluation territory, which then led to this major crash. And then in the 2017, 2018, 2019 timeframe, we went, we, we fell back down into being undervalued. We then rode that fair value logger, logger in the regression trend line for a while. And then once we got into 2021, we had an alt season and the asset class went overvalued for a while. This cycle started off as a Bitcoin only bull run in 2022. It continued as a Bitcoin only bull run in 2023, continued as a Bitcoin only bull run in 2024, and then potentially found a top in 2025 without a rotation into altcoins. So let this be a lesson that there is never any guarantee about what the future may hold. You could get an alt season at some point in the future, but it's not justification for holding altcoins for years as they just simply bleed to Bitcoin. In order to get an alt season, Bitcoin has to go durably overvalued. That euphoria has to come in. All the top indicators have to start going off. That is what leads to the rotation. That's what leads to the more durably overvalued regime. But until you get there, you're better off with Bitcoin. Because as we've said forever, Bitcoin leads the bull market. And until euphoria happens, Bitcoin is probably going to be the better play. That doesn't mean you're not going to have periods where dominance goes down, but Bitcoin continues to be the better play year after year after year. And as I showed in a recent video, if you look <coughs> at all Bitcoin pairs, they actually have gone down four years in a row. So remember, the future is not promised just because an influencer confidently tells you that all season is going to happen around the corner doesn't mean it's actually going to happen. Okay, so going into 2026, a lot of lessons have been learned from the last cycle. Don't forget them. A lot of good investing principles can be taken by all of us, right? We've all learned things this cycle. Consider it your tuition into the cryptoverse. Don't beat yourself up over the losses from some altcoins you bought. I've lost plenty of money on random altcoins throughout the throughout the last, you know, many, many years. Maybe not this cycle, but in prior cycles. I've lost plenty of money on, on some of those random altcoins. So don't beat yourself up. It's the tuition that all of us pay. 
into the cryptoverse. Now use that to become a better investor going forward. The reality is that you know, if you if you do constantly peddle alt season to a lot of people, you're basically just shilling the equivalent of penny stocks and telling people why penny stocks are better than buying the the blue chips. And that's not a good strategy long term. It really never has been, and I don't think it ever will be. That's the important lesson that I think we can all take from this. So we spend years undervalued, we spend years overvalued. This cycle, we've mostly been below that fair value logger in the regression trend line. We poked our head above it a few times in 2024 and then in later 2024 and 2025, but it always mimicked 2019 where it didn't quite get us to where we wanted to go. I believe right now we're in this phase. We're just kind of bleeding down as QT has come to an end and QE has begun. It's just not enough yet to justify the next bull market. At some point, we'll get there. Just not sure that we're there quite yet. If you take the percent difference between the fair value and the total cryptocurrency market capitalization, you get a chart that looks like this. And what it shows you is that whenever we get down here to this like, you know, 50% undervalued or whatever, it tends to end up being a great time to accumulate crypto for the long term. So just keep that in mind uh, throughout this year and, and in future years that the, the major euphoria peaks are not promised, but in these areas down here has historically been a good time to get into the cryptoverse. And my guess is that we will revisit those levels in 2026. Ultimately, I do think the entire asset class will go to $10 trillion, plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder, what's a few trillion dollars among friends?